welcome back to the special edition of Hannity. Now here is more of my interview with my friend, my colleague, Benjamin Hall. When you first saw your wife, mm. and she has to also now, she's going through a lot herself. You've got three children at home, three young girls, beautiful yeah. girls, and she, her world has been rocked. Uh, she's scared to death uh, for long periods of time. She doesn't even know if you're dead or alive. Yeah. She had to go through that. But let's talk about when you first set eyes on her. Where were you? I was in Lonstrel. I was in Germany at that point at, yeah. the, at the, um, the hospital. First, I remember first trying to hug her, but I had so many w wires and tubes sticking out of me, I couldn't quite find a way to do so. But we just stayed there together. And all she just said was, it's, it's going to be all right. It's going to be fine. We're going to get through this. Apologized, you know, for, I'm not sure what for, but for putting her into that position, for being in, in that place. And I suppose that's something that came out. I think it was more for what she was about to go through because people tell the story of what happened to me and how hard it was for me, how brave I've been. My wife have, and my family have gone through just as much. They really have. She's been the one who's picked up all the pieces. She's been the strength behind me, who willed me on, who kept the children together. You said something else that, that really struck me too. You said, you remember Pierre. I talked about the story of Pierre and you and the horses in Afghanistan, but you say when you're alone, you think about Pierre and that you believe again that he laid down his life to save you. Um, and I should have been the first person killed in all of this. And that day he saved my life. And it seems like you think about him every day. I do, every single day. I've got pictures up of him at home a lot. And we talk about him, yeah. we talk about him, about the incredible things he did, talk about the amazing things he did, what a great person he was. And I won't let what happened, the horror of what happened, take away the incredible person he was. And I won't think about him as this, Someone lying in a coffin now was hurt. I think of the incredible person who helped so many people, who saved my life, who taught me so much about the job I really love now. And that's how I have to remember Pierre. And I think anyone who dies, you look at them, you commemorate them, you remember their lives, you remember the great things they did, you remember the affection you had for them, and you hold them dear and you keep on going. Don't let that drag you back. Remember them and do everything you want to for them. Do more because of them. And that's how I feel now. That's another reason why I think I was given a gift. Like I realize that now that I'm not gonna waste a single moment ahead of me. There isn't time to waste it, isn't it? Let's do that next week or the week after. Do it now. If you wanna do something, do it right now. And I do it for Pierre often. If I think I think I wanna do something or I feel tired, I say, there's no time for being tired. Get up and do it. Do it for Pierre, do it for everyone else who's gone. And, Got to find that drive to keep doing things because that can go in an instant. It went for Pierre, it went for other people. That can end. And it would be a pity to have missed things that you wanted to do just because you were too caught up in other things to do them or too lazy to do them. Just do them, do them now. I mean, the wisdom behind this that came out of trauma and pain is inspiring uh, to say the least. And what would you like to do? You think about the future. Would you ever want to go back and be a war correspondent again? Um, no, I don't think so. And I've thought a lot about it. And it's not because I don't think it's a, a, I love doing it and it's an incredible job, but I don't think I could put my family through it again. And it, so it's for them. And I had already talked before Ukraine about pulling back from some of the war zones. And it was an ongoing discussion that my wife and I had. I'd moved to DC. I was covering the State Department. I was traveling with the Secretary of State. Ukraine was the one war that drew me back in. I wasn't planning on doing it. Because sometimes it's not just about how much you want to do and how passionate I am for the job. I had to think of them and the family. And finally, I've learned that lesson. I'm, maybe I could have learned it earlier, but people need to keep doing this job. And I encourage everyone else to go out and keep doing this job. It is essential. We need to know what's happening around the world. It can well affect you. And so I encourage people to go out, be planned, be prepared, know how you're going to do it, but keep doing this job. Will I go back to Ukraine? I, I'm sure I will go back to Ukraine at some point. Uh, will I go to the front lines? No, I don't think I will right now. Um, mm. Did you ever speak with President Zelensky? No, I've been in touch with his office. and I know he's happy to have me come back and speak to him. And so that's certainly an interview I would like to do. Yeah. As people, I think, are watching and listening to this and they see an inspiration, what are we, we're about a full year now, mm -hmm. right, that you, you've had this. And you're out there telling your story and you're saying this with incredible positivity and, and an attitude that is inspirational. And... You know, for everybody, and I think in life, seems to think that they have troubles. Mm. And I 
don't think there's anything more difficult than this. So I think that that is an inspiring thing. Um, I'm suggesting that we turn this into a movie. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched or read um, any of the books about life after death or near death experience. Mm -hmm. I happen to personally like them. And one was uh, 90 Minutes in Heaven. Mm -hmm. Dan Piper it was a preacher, had a horrible car accident. They declared him dead at the scene. And lo and behold, a, a preacher came by, prayed over him, and he came back from life. But he described his experience in heaven and how that changed his life. And another book, Heaven is Real, about a young child, same thing. I saw Jesus, I was in heaven. Um, has this impacted your spirituality in life? In other words, you said you believe in God. Mm. Is it deeper? Do you believe God kept you here for a reason? I think it's a question that anyone who's seen horror will ask themselves. You know, how can horrible things have disease? You know, how can you have a God and there be disease? And I think the same way. I answered it back then. I answer the same way now. I think there is more evil. Uh, there is more good in this world than there is evil. There really is. And you've seen horrible evil. No, I've seen a lot of it. I've seen horrible things in war, absolutely. But I saw more good. The people who came together to help me, it's a more powerful force than the bad. I know that. And that's what we have to do. We have to fight on the side of good. And that's what we got to do. What's next for you? Besides being the most positive person I've ever met, <laughs> well, I mean, with, the, with the greatest attitude I think I've ever met. I mean, I want to get back to work. I think that I love work and I love the stories I tell. I think the people I get to meet are, are fascinating. I want to keep meeting incredible people. What I really want to do is the stories I want to tell are of the incredible people I've met first, and those heroes who came to save me, those incredible stories of hope and optimism. And I spent my whole career talking about the horrors and the wars and the bad things. I think I might spend some time telling stories about the incredible people out there, the people that we need to hear more of. So maybe at first I'm going to focus on, on, on that as well. I want to talk to people who have gone through injuries uh, and attacks like I have been, see how they fought through it, try and help them through it. And um, keep meeting people, keep telling stories, keep trying to make, it sounds corny, trying to make the world a better place, just make people do everything every day, that's something not, that is good, you know? Benjamin, that's not corny. Yeah. That's well. goodness. You know, what I learned about the story behind the story and everybody from Jennifer Griffin, the Polish Prime Minister, um, the Save Our Allies, the group uh, that risked their lives to save you, um, everybody involved in the hospitals, all the, th all the people that you write about that work to help you and save you at this point or that point, you know, magically getting saved and getting out of that war zone, that car magically turning around and coming back. Um, your daughter coming to you. Now you, you see the blessings in life. There's, there's something really deep and profound in this story. This book, you know, I don't tear up a lot. I'm, I like to project toughness, but this book brought more than a few tears to my eyes. Your story is beyond inspirational. I love the fact that you told it, and I think all of us can learn a lot from it. And. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you even answered a couple of my texts. I was like, <laughs> he, he's not going to talk to me. He's got a million people writing him. But it made me, they were always positive. And I remember I would stop and I'd say, wow, it's an incredible attitude. You are, you're an inspiration to everybody and uh, also a friend and a colleague. And I'm so glad that the Fox family did everything in their yeah. power to help you. I'm proud of every one of them for doing that. And uh, honestly, it's been an honor to spend time with you. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. It's a pleasure the to be here. The book is called Saved, A War Reporter's Mission to Make It Home. By the way, welcome home. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, my friend. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.